Hi, today we're going to talk about making high quality 3D prints using Mathematica. Uh, this is going to build on the last two tutorials, uh, tutorial 10, in which we talked about using creating graphics objects uh, from basic geometric objects, and tutorial 11, in which we talked about creating curves and surfaces uh, using, uh, using functions. Um, so now that we have our mathematical tools to make 3D prints, we're going to talk about how you can get Mathematica to export and make even better 3D prints uh, using certain functions and options along the way. Um, all right, first thing, let's talk about how to export a model for 3D printing. So you've used all your tools, you created your model, and now you want to export it and make it 3D printable. So uh, it's very easy to export from Mathematica. You use the export command. So um, here's a zigzag example that we've used before. Look at this. So what do we do? We used graphics 3D as the wrapper. We have the tube command. And we've put this tube command around our point list. And so that gives us this tube that visits each of those points. Um, we named it zigzag. So now we're going to export it. So how do you export something? You export something by uh, putting in the place where you want, the place on your computer where you want the uh, file to go. And you put in here what you want to export. So. When we run this, it now puts this into our specific location. So uh, in particular, this notebook directory right here allows you to start to organize your files in a nice way because uh, wherever this file is saved, uh, notebook directory finds the path that gets you there. So in this case, gosh, look at this. Uh, this tells you that it's in my Dropbox, in a folder called web, in a folder called 2017, etc. Uh, and this image, this zigzag.png, gets placed into that folder. Now, um, because we said .png, Mathematica knows that we wanted to export an image file to it. So you can see what you've exported using the import command. So we copy this same string, or we could just click here and click the import button. Um, and when we import, we get our object. Um, but this object, we exported it as an image. And so when we import it, it's an image again. But because it's an image, we can't rotate it or add to it anymore. It's not the 3D object anymore, it's just uh, a picture of it. Um, we could still do things with this. We could do some image processing if we wanted to. But you probably wanted to do something in three dimensions, so let's do that. So just like before, we exported this with a zigzag.png. Well, this time we're going to export as an STL file. So an STL file is one of the most basic uh, 3D model types, uh, which basically what it is, is it's a collection of a whole bunch of uh, triangles and vertices and, uh, and, and the, 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 the lines that connect them all. Uh, so we were, every time you export your STL file, you should always re-import it to see if it works. Uh, if you notice here, this isn't what we expected, right? If you look at this, if you look at our object, it was nice and whole. This is not whole at all. It kind of, it's, it's a bunch of tubes. Well, it's, this, this is not the easiest thing to, to be able to do. I'm going to reevaluate it so we can look at it again. Um, this, this, it's not, it's not all there. So 
what you'll see is that if you're using this export command, then sometimes what you export is not the same thing as is written into the file. Like the thing that you see in the Mathematica uh, worksheet is not the same thing that gets exported. So you always want to re-import your STL file to make sure that it's a whole file. So if we wanted to fix this, we can see the things that weren't exported were these corners of the zigzag. So those are the points that were on the edges. So, um, so before our tube went from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 0 to 2, 0, 0, and we've got all these cylinder bits and so what we'll need to do is we'll need to add in those uh, round sphere bits that are on the end. So we can do that. We'll add into our tubes. We'll add in these spheres. I've colored them red so that we can see them. And now that both the uh, tubes are there and the spheres are there, and if we export it and re-import it, then now this is a whole object. So sometimes when you're working with your 3D prints, you, along the way you should be exporting and re-importing to make sure that everything's working, behaving well. Um, you'll see also that we exported this blue and red object and what came back was this light blue object which basically has no color on it right now. Um, that's because STL, as an object, as a, as, a, as a format, it doesn't have any color in it. It doesn't say what color each of these uh, polygons are. So we need to use a different format like X3D or WRL if you want the model to have some color. <coughs> now Mathematica will export to these two uh, types, uh, these two file types but you can't import them. Mathematica can't import these colored uh, 3D models. But if you want to make sure that it's worked correctly, then you should probably upload it to Sketchfab. So create an account with Sketchfab, upload it to Sketchfab, and then you can really see, uh, see, some, see, see your model, make sure that all the colors are right. Um, another thing you could do is you could also upload it directly to Shapeways. Uh, which is where you, which, which will, what we'll be using to print out our models along the way. Uh, Sketchfab is also a great place to go look and learn more about uh, what type of models people are creating uh, and get, get some, do some brainstorming for your project. All right, so um, let's go. Let's take a look at what one of the things that we we saw last time, which was this. Uh, three-dimensional curve in space. Um, if we, so here I'm exporting and re-importing this file at the same time, and we're going to take a look at it. Now, this picture looks great. It looks super smooth. It looks like the ideal surface. But when we export it and re-import it, it doesn't have that same quality to it. Now maybe this is a quality that you're interested in. Maybe you're interested in having some, uh, having your surface not be smooth, but having it be more, uh, more geometric. Uh, and if in that case, that's fine. But let's say you wanted to make this smooth. Let's talk about how to do that. So uh, the basic thought here is that the, the Mathematica has to simplify somewhere. And so the way it simplifies is it decides how many points along the path to take. It breaks that up into a whole bunch of different segments and then um, draws and then connects those different segments together. So even along the outside here, you can see these lines, which are where they've been segmented. And around the, around the tube, it's also been segmented. So Mathematica has made some decisions. And so if you want to make this nicer, you need to tell Mathematica what your decision is. And the way to do that is to use plot points. 
So to make the tube smoother, we have to tell Mathematica that we want there to be more segments taken along the path which we'll do in the outside here. So this is parametric plot 3D. We want more points taken along the outside path. But we also want there to be more points taken around the tube as well. We want there to be more points taken here around the, uh, the tube. So we have to put specify that as an option inside the tube plot style option. So when we export and re-import, this actually takes quite a bit longer to process because it's taking our, um, it's taking, it's giving a many more choices along the way. And you can start to see, hey look, now around the, uh, around the tube, it's much smoother, but we can still see these joints. So if we wanted to have fewer joints along the way, we would change this 100 to something larger. All right, so we can also use plot points when we're dealing with making our torus. Right, so here's our torus from last time. This time it's green. Um, and you can see, you can see a lot of these uh, rectangular bits, basically. We want to add in more, wanted to sample more points along the way. Um, something that's weird, right? This graph really doesn't look too much different from this. This surface doesn't look too much different from this surface. But when we export it and re-import it, then we'll be able to see, oh, the, the resolution looks so much better. So if you're using these, if you're using any plot function, then you should use plot points to make it smoother. Um, we also did this one. We had region plot. This one looks nice, but if we export it and re-import it, then you start to see, wow, that's really bumpy. That looks more like, excuse me, that looks more like what you would see if you were walking in on jagged mountains. But if we wanted to look to do something much, much prettier, then we can add in more plot points. Here we have a hundred, we want to sample a hundred points in the x direction, a hundred points in the y direction, and a hundred points in the z direction. And when we do that, again, it's taking much longer to export, but that's because it's making this much prettier for us. And go. And go. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, so sometimes these computations can take quite a while. There we go. So now we get our surface. It's much nice and smoother. If we were to print this out on a 3D printer, we could really rub our hand along it and feel what this sine of x plus sine of y feels like. I'm going to stop here for now and continue in a second talking about meshes.